Okay. Well, hey, it, it's Thursday, and if it's Thursday at one o'clock Central Time, it is Think Tank Thursday, and I am beyond excited. I, you know, Renee, you and I have been trying to talk together, have a meeting for at least two years. So um, we got we got locked in place, and now we finally were sort of face to face, right? right. I love it. I'm, I, I am so excited uh, to share Renee Welch with you all. She is the CEO of um, Embed. Embed has been a partner of Trainertainment since I started the company in 2005. And I think, think you've had a uh, U.S. presence since, I don't know, maybe 2000? Or maybe it was right around that same time, 2004, something like that. Well, we've had, we have deep roots and uh, have been partners for a long time. So, Renee, thank you for coming to Think Tank, and I can't wait for the audience to, to know you. I do want to thank our digital sponsors. Um, Renee, uh, as you know, Embed is one of our conference sponsors, but in the light of um, uh, pandemics and so much digital and social media way of being, um, we're happy to give Embed <laughs> billing for digital sponsorships. Our official dig digital sponsors are Redemption Plus and Bowling Music Network. So um, I want to introduce the audience to you, Renee. You have been in the family entertainment or entertainment world globally for just, just over two years or right at two years, correct? I know I met you two years ago at Bowl Expo. Yes, just over two years it's been now, so it's gone That's quickly. That's great. That's great. And by your accent, we know you're not physically here, probably, in the U.S. Tell us where you are. So I am Australian, of course, as you can tell, but I am actually based in Singapore. In Singapore. Great, great. And so we've uh, managed this one o'clock think tank central time in a very curious way it may be pre-recorded just as a just as a, a, a bit of info there so Renee what do you think what do you think about this entertainment industry and how in the heck did you get here how, how do you how do you go from what you were doing to, to what you're doing now sure so it's an interesting story so I actually spent most of my career um, working in the global travel industry uh, in the UK and Europe um, and Australia. Um, and I, I ultimately created or I'm the co-creator of a company called Booking Boss, which is a award-winning win ticketing and booking solution. Yes. Um, and uh, essentially my company was sold to Helix Leisure back in 2017. Uh, and then in 2018, I became CEO of the Solutions Group. So I had sort of just under a year to um, understand and, and work on the integration of the two businesses uh, before I stepped into the CEO role. And the CEO role encompasses um, two of Helix, uh, Helix Leisure's companies, Booking Boss and Embed. And Embed, right. And of course, the one I'm so familiar with and connected to is Embed. So I didn't even realize that, I don't think. So Booking Boss came under, I knew they acquired, I'm, I knew Helix acquired uh, Booking Boss. And so, so you're literally, how do you do that? That's like having two companies. Yes, I do have two Renee. companies. Operate. Um, oh I think about my one little bitty company uh, that uh, that nearly just sent me to bed. How do, how do you manage that? How many how many team members are you responsible for? So we've got just over two hundred team members globally uh, between the two businesses, and you know we're very much a, a global organisation. We've got offices in Sydney, Perth, Dubai, Singapore, and Dallas. Um, so we're, we're you know spread across the the world. But I, I guess from my perspective, um, in, in the early stages of 2017, when I was in the process of integrating both the businesses so that obviously we could extract the value from the, the acquisition um, and also integrate the team members and, and get everyone on board, which is a really big task when you bring two, two businesses together and very different businesses um, from the perspective that there are different stages of their life cycle. So yeah. looking back very much a a startup, um, embed a very well-established business, um, pioneers in their industry, 
um, but great credibility and, and brand equity as well. Fortunately, though, I, I really feel that there is some great synergies between if you just look purely at the industries um, that we play in. So Booking Boss is very much the tour activity and attraction space oh, yeah. um, and our solution uh, essentially manages all of the back-end operations and, and the online booking capability of those types of businesses. And then you look at the family entertainment centre industry and I think the, the interesting thing is, as I've uh, moved through this past two years is just the the synergies around the technology, you know, the family entertainment industry is no longer just an arcade, you know, that is a component right. of, of a venue, but they also have other experiences, albeit, you know, typically inside, um, that require booking boss type technology. Mm -hmm. So we've really been able to extract a lot of value in the synergies around what the, the needs and requirements are of both those sectors which I think has been, you know, very unique and, and beneficial for us as a group. That's great. That's great. Well, you know, it's, it's always interesting um, to start something new because, gosh, everything's new in the beginning. And it's, we're kind of in an interesting time because we're going to be in this renewed phase because um, we've all been a bit closed down and um, we're getting, you know, slowly back up to speed and to reopen. And um, I think one of the great things is, is now, although things get to be new again, we have all this knowledge. We already know a bunch of stuff. So if you could go back and look at two years ago when you first came on board with all that you know today, what do you wish you would have known sooner um, that you'll be so glad you can go forward with now that we're, we're getting ready to launch back again? Well, right now, I wish I had known the full impact of the COVID-19 situation oh. to our industry well, and our had, company. Had a, had a big uh, fortune-telling <laughs> ball. That would have been nice. Yeah, yeah. So we all had more time to prepare, but, you know, obviously we don't. Um, and so I don't think anyone's really have, has a playbook, no matter what industry you're in, for this type of, you know, for navigating this type of pandemic. Um, so I definitely wish I had have known that. But ultimately, I think I just um, wish I had have known that, uh, you know, just ask, ask questions, ask for help. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, I think that, you know, sometimes you can let your ego get in the way of, of maybe asking for help or even just don't feel, a lot of people just simply don't feel comfortable asking for help. And uh, that's certainly something that I, I wish I had known many years ago as I um, started my career. But also in terms of, um, you know, one of the things I've not been afraid of in the last few years is really asking this, what, what's considered the stupid question, you know, because oh. it is amazing when, you know, I don't know, I'm not a coder, I'm not a software engineer, but I certainly have a good grasp of, of technology and how it comes together. And, you know, I've got a very logical approach to things, I believe. But, um, you know, sometimes it's just about if you don't know the answer, if you don't know what people are talking about, ask. One, I learn a lot from doing so. And two, I think it's incredible when you just ask those questions, what actually transpires in, in you know, even the experts in the room. They're like, oh, I never thought of it that way. Exactly, Maybe we could yeah. Um, so I think that that is probably the single most powerful thing that, you know, certainly has served me well in my career and I wish I had started to do a lot earlier rather than be, you know, in the corner of quiet, not wanting to ask the questions. Isn't that interesting? I, I, that's um, asking for help more and asking more questions, not feeling, not feeling like any question is a dumb question. That, that's fantastic. And I, you know, I mean, in my in my CEO group, uh, one of the things that, and I've been a member since 2008, and one of the things that, that seems so common between all of us is that challenge of, of asking for help. And I'm not, and I, and I'm not sure maybe, maybe that is ego. We used to have, we used to have a guy that, uh, you know, one of the biggest values of belonging to that group is that we, we issue process. We, we bring things and um, we have those peers help us think, think it through. And one guy would never issue process unless he already knew what he wanted to know. Well, you know, that's, that's a, that's a difficult way to, to live. And I just, 
you know, I, 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 I think I have a brain cell or two, but I absolutely know I'm not the smartest person in the room. And um, I love, I also love what you said about how it can kind of create a conversation. You know, when we ask a question and there's somebody else in the room that can contribute and give an answer or says, oh, wow, I never thought of it like that. That, that contribution goes both ways, you know, yeah. don't you think? I mean, absolutely. And now more than ever, you know, we really are trying to navigate this together. And it's really important that, you know, we put our hand up, we flag if we're not sure. We, you know, we're all learning at the same time, at the same rate, ultimately, um, through this. And I, I just think that's a really important thing to recognise. And I want to make sure that people aren't afraid, even if it's just picking up the phone to, to ask for help or ask, ask a question. Um, I think it's really important in these times. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that. In uh, you're you're in a really global situation with Helix being spread everywhere, and um, I, I just like what should we be thinking about it in in the theme of Think Tank Thursday? Um, what should we be thinking about right now? As it as it's because I mean, more than ever, we all have so much in common. You know, uh, we absolutely do. Yeah, we absolutely do. And, and I think, I mean, certainly for me, um, that's definitely something that's shone through this pandemic is, you know, we're all, we're all humans. We all have emotions. We all, you know, have our ups and downs through this period. And, and you know, life goes on as we were discussing before we, um, before we started the conversation. You know, there's other outside things that are happening to people as well. But, but I guess from my perspective, I think what's, most important to think about right now would be to think like a startup. Um, yeah. Yeah. To think like a startup. You know, they look at the world in ways that allow them to really unleash their true creative potential. And if you start thinking like a startup, then you too can conquer giants, slay dragons, you know, and change the world. And that's, that's what this is all about. And I think startups, um, you know, I guess have this level of resilience and ability to change the game mm -hmm. um, that really makes the difference during times like this. And, you know, we've gone through a period in our industry where we've, we've seen, you know, exponential growth, you know, great competition. It's been thriving for quite a while. And so within that, um, it, it's great, but you can sort of get inside it, maybe a little comfort zone. Yeah. And now we're really forced out of that and we've really got to think, okay, well, let's, let's think like a startup. What, what else could we do? You know, whether it be revenue models or, you know, business models or how we interact with our consumers during this downtime. Um, you know, that's, that's, I guess, how I would, I would like people to start approaching this. I think it's a really important um, way to... Great. To approach something like this. Well, I, I agree. You know, we, we, we talked about that early on. It, a startup doesn't have any different issues than all of us have today. They, they don't know where the money's coming from. They're not sure who's going to work. They're not sure how it's going to work. And they're, they can't sleep at night. They're ready to get up and go every single day. They don't wait. They're not waiting on things no. to pass or things to get better. They're pushing forward every single day. So that's great. That, that's fantastic. Well, so what, what's, uh, what are you all doing at, at Embed right now? Specifically, what kinds of things are you doing um, to help transition, to move into this? I'm not even calling it a, a new normal, Renee. I, I think of it in it as a now normal because every single day is going to be a little bit different than the day before, which is quite frankly how it was before all this stuff started. It's just that we got a flashlight on it now, you know? So, so yeah, that's on. So yeah. True. yeah. So true. And I think that, you know, what, what this pandemic has certainly done for me and, and other people that I've spoken to is bring them right back into the present moment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm certainly a person that's always, you know, a few steps ahead. I'm, I'm forward thinking, I'm, you know, creating the, the future vision and, and trying to make sure that our plans, you know, execute on that vision as we move forward. But I've really been forced to come right back down to, okay, what is this present moment? What does today bring? 
Uh, what do we need to do today to make a difference to tomorrow? And, you know, it's, it's been a real um, learning curve for me, actually, in, in actually coming back to that present moment. Um, and I'm not sure if you've seen The Last Dance with Michael Jordan. I just finished the series, which I absolutely know. loved. But he, he talks about how, you know, he, he was just 100% present in that moment. He never thought about the play ahead or the play behind. He just stayed present. And I think that was part of his brilliance mm -hmm. um, in watching the series, which was phenomenal. But I, I guess from our perspective, you know, back, um, you know, eight, nine weeks ago, we sort of saw the pandemic coming because obviously I'm based in Singapore. It started in China. Um, and this side of the world started shutting down quite a bit faster than, than Europe and, and other parts of the world. And so... Um, even even with that, you know, you thought you thought at that time, no, it'll be contained to this area. You know, it's it's being shut down. It's uh, you know, no one, no disaster recovery plan or even a big business with a pandemic plan even expected um, the impact of this on a global scale. And so, so we we acted rapidly. We definitely have a startup mindset, um, and I have an exceptional executive team. You know, from um, high tech industries, also from this industry, you know, and the combination I think is one of our, our superpowers, to be honest. That's awesome. um, but we, we sort of uh, huddled together and we, we really, I think we worked seven days, well, 21 days straight, just uh, reformulating our strategy. Um, obviously, our primary concern at that point was. Um, all of our people, how do we get them to work from home effectively, which we did prior to lockdown, which I'm very pleased about. But then, you know, how do we make sure that they remain healthy and happy and connected? So we've done, you know, a lot of all hands over this period. I don't think you can underestimate the amount of communication that's required um, to make sure people still feel part of the Embed and Booking Boss family and the Helix family and and feel connected, even despite the fact that we had to make those tough decisions like everyone else of putting people on furlough and stand down globally. Um, we also created a Facebook page, a, a private group, so everyone could sort of share what they were doing in isolation and, um, you know, give tips about how to get through this and, um, you know, just, just share some funny antidotes. I mean, there's so many memes and so many funny things that have yeah. gone around online so it was really it has been an avenue for us to connect and have a laugh which has been great um so you know that's that's i, I guess a couple of things we've done to ensure that our people still feel like they're part of our business okay. even though mm -hmm. you know they're not working day in day out um although i'm fortunate that we've been able to bring them back now but uh, that was sort of what we did up front then we um created a survival strategy um, and, you know, what are we going to do for, and it's a very short term, it was very short term, and that was pretty much immediate. I mean, we, we rallied on that survival strategy within five days, um, and then you would have seen in March, you know, we, we went out to our customers, um, we set up uh, license relief programs because we wanted to help, you know, we knew customers wouldn't be able to pay our license fees, um, you know, uh, 100%. So we, we've set up some relief programs and discounts around that. And then we really looked at, you know, what could we do and within our means to support our industry's recovery? And what do we have available um, that will, will have that level of impact? Um, and so obviously you saw by early April, we launched our Embed COVID-19 Relief Act, um, which essentially offered our brand new product uh, the mobile wallet free for a year. So we're, we were pretty proud of that. But also, you know, that, that was a choice that we made and that, that has a direct revenue impact to us as well. But, but at the same time, we, we felt that there was no other choice to make. You know, we really wanted to be able to, contrib to actively contribute to the industry's recovery and everything that we had been reading from Asia and Europe and Australia and, and even Singapore pointed to the exponential growth in contactless payments, yeah. in contactless delivery, um, just in, you know, people, our mobile phones are an extension of our body, basically. I mean, yeah. mine is always 
less than a meter away from me, sadly. Uh, exactly. So, you know, we really felt that that was the most powerful thing that we could do to to help these businesses recover, but also on the flip side of that, to provide comfort to the guest to attract them back into the venue. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think we've been involved in a number of um, a number of calls across the industry, and what we're seeing is that although people are opening, and this is this is globally, although people are opening, um, although a lot of our clients still aren't able to, depending on what region they're in. Uh, we're not seeing customers flood back just yet. There's still right. there's still a reticence. There's still a concern. People are hyper vigilant about you know um, their health, their well being. They've got lots of different factors to to consider. Be it you know older family members that, that you right. know they want to protect, or or maybe even you know ill children that they want to protect. So there's there's so many different factors around that and. What we've also seen is that people are looking for companies that that ultimately communicate their um, hygiene protocols. They go, they're wanting to go somewhere where they feel safe. Um, I think we've got an opportunity to create that safety bubble in our industry to entice those customers back. And the mobile wallet was our first step in doing that. And um, our second step, is, as you know, is now to announce our... COVID-19 Resource Centre and that's sort of expanding um, our relief efforts with all the things that we know um, and providing um, the ability for the, the venue to expedite the uptake of the mobile wallet by launching a full marketing toolkit, you know, for every single piece of creative you could want, including social media posts, email, EDM copy, um, banner, banners, uh, wobblers for your readers, every single piece of communication you could possibly think of we've created and we're giving it to our customers for free. Um, and then on top of that, um, we're also, we've also created a fantastic toolkit for reopening around hygiene, um, you know, and essentially promoting the fact that you are committed to safe, clean fun. Um, and we're also launching that, which I'm really thrilled about. You know, it's really world-class marketing. We're giving it away for free. Um, you know, I, I feel privileged that we're in a position to be able to offer these types of tools to the industry to support recovery. And ultimately, that supports us in the long run. Um, and, you know, we're all, we, we truly do believe and, you know, part of what we discuss in all of our leadership meetings is that we are in this together. What else can we do? How do we push ourselves more uh, to deliver not only fantastic products, but great tools to support, to support our industry? That's great. That's great. Well, you know, it's um, that communication piece is so, so, so important and such a big key. And it's not just even communication to our customer, but it's communication. I know certainly in the United States, to our government that that we know what we're doing and we can do this we can be open and we can be safe about it and uh, you used another word i want to reiterate and that is the word comfort because we've got to be providing comfort for our internal guests the people that are going to come to work every day and then also the external guests so that's great that creative is just going to be spectacular i can't really wait to to see what what that stuff looks like well this is great we we should not have waited two whole years i hope we'll get to have a, a coffee or a cocktail or something face to face in a real space. I'm I'm really getting hungry for that that real human that real human contact. I, I appreciate you spending some time with me on Think Tank Thursday. I can hardly wait to to get it out there for others to to hear. But before you go, I, I must know, um, in the spirit of, of Think Tank and being part of the Trainertainment family, as you all are, uh, you know, we're pretty obsessed with growing people because we think that if people grow, um, then businesses grow. And it really starts with the, with the person first. So I'm curious on um, a consistent basis Renee, what do you do to help yourself and or others grow? So I, I live by and my team knows my favorite quote is great things don't come from comfort zones. 
Oh. And this has never been truer, a truer statement than in the last three months, certainly for oh, me personally. For sure. Um, but being slightly uncomfortable, whether or not, you know, by choice or being slightly pushed, um, it really does give us an impetus to achieve our goals that in a lot of cases we never thought were possible. And so I definitely live by that. I, I think that uh, it's, it's certainly guided me well over, over the many years I've, I've uh, used that quote. And Great. yeah, that's, that's definitely what I do consistently to step outside my comfort zone, do something different, you know, be it a tender, you know, it could be something small, attending a, a webinar from a completely different industry mm -hmm. sector see what we can learn from that industry and whether there's anything applicable to ours it could be skydiving a little bit more outrageous but you know just <laughs> anything that it gets you out out of your comfort zone and so we definitely live by that at embed um and i'm sure i push some buttons and and get people outside their comfort zone quite regularly <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite clients and somebody i can hear consider a dear friend always says well if you're not squirming you're not learning <laughs> I thought yeah that's right so have you really jumped out of a plane I have actually yes I have wow and and would you do it again oh good question now that I've got children I'm, I'm a little bit more of a scared <laughs> cat. <laughs> yeah, I, I got a lot more conservative I started driving a little slower when babies were born I get what you mean yeah, <laughs> yeah, this was this was great. I, I really appreciate you taking the time, and hope you'll come back again. We'll have lots of other things to think about and to talk about uh, when we can get on the other side of this. There'll be lots of things we've learned. Thank you. I'd love to. I appreciate it. Thank All you. right. All right. Thank you.